the people that you see walking on the street, things aren't always what they appear to be. Some of them are living with monsters, are dealing with uh, extreme acts of violence every day. Some of them are, are in fear that their children are going to be kidnapped, and yet they have to you know, go on with uh, daily life. When our clients first come in, they are afraid. They, uh, they don't know how they are going to get out of their situation. They don't know where to turn. At that moment where, where they find the courage to come in, it's a, it's a very um, powerful moment because that's the moment where they've decided, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. When I was about 14 years old, I met my ex-husband. By the age 15, I was already pregnant, ran away from home. For a while, I think Patty thought she was in love, but as things progressed, he started to abuse her, and he would rape her. He was um, abusive towards my children, but he would take them away so I wouldn't see. And my 15-year-old, he tells me, Mom, when are you going to do something? How much longer are you going to let us go through this? The abuse was so bad, and it was so bad for the children, she had to get out of the relationship. I ended up in a homeless shelter. I stayed there for three years with my kids. He let him go homeless for years. He was a truck driver, but he never gave her anything for support while he was living sort of as a middle-class, working-class person. I had the actual forms to file for a divorce and try to fill it out on my own. I was not doing a great job of it. And when I first met her, I asked her for her family law paperwork, and she handed me this big bundle of, of, of paper, and, and I thought, oh my God, you know, what a mess. So I decided to represent her in court. We asked the judge for child support and spousal support, and the judge made the order, and, and we served it on him, and they, they weren't homeless anymore. And Patty is now working for a better life for herself. I could have never done it without her. And I'm still struggling, but I feel free. When Guillermina first came into the center, I could just see the fear in her face. It was a life or death situation. She needed to get medical care for her son. He needed a kidney transplant because he was in complete renal failure. In order to get the medical help that she needed, she needed to have dad's consent. Era una operación este algo complicada. Entonces, este pues los doctores quieren tener toda la responsabilidad de los padres. He had been out of the picture for years. He had issues with substance abuse and was in and out of treatment centers. Se perdió más en el alcoholismo y nunca trató de buscar a su familia. Even though he knew the child was ill, he still wouldn't take the responsibility and say, I'm going to give you consent to treat the child. Me sentí impotente. Yo siendo su madre no tenía la custodia legal. Yo decía, es mi hijo y yo tengo el derecho de él, pero me dijeron no. Her son was at a point where it was a life or death situation, and we were able to have the judge hear her situation um, quickly. The judge gave her the order, and she was able to make those medical decisions. Y todo se arregló favorable. Me dieron la custodia. Llegó el trasplante del, del muchachito. Eh, llegó el divorcio. Las tres cosas se juntaron en un año. Hoy es un joven eh, lleno de vida, tiene 17 años, ella hace deporte, ahorita está corriendo para el maratón. Es un joven muy sano ahorita, gracias a Dios. I see a profound justice gap in, in Los Angeles and, and in the country. I truly believe that to the extent people are disenfranchised, we are all diminished by it. People who can't afford to walk into a lawyer's office and write a check for a retainer need to have a voice in the legal system and they need access to the courts. And it's the Buhai Center that enables those people to have that voice and to have that access.
And I think our legal work stands up against, you know, anybody's, no matter what the, the price of the hour is. What's our price? Free. <laughs> Free. I, I heard a saying to the effect, without peace in the family, there can be no peace in the world. With each individual that we help, that's a small sliver of a bigger problem. You improve the community, you change the direction of their children's lives. When a child grows up in a safe and a happy environment, he's more likely to go to school, she's more likely to graduate, they're more likely to go to college, they're more likely to become taxpayers, they're more likely to go out and do good things for people. We are in the possession of something very special and we can use that to change people's lives, to help people change people's lives. Puesto que si yo no hubiese tenido esa custodia, ahorita mi hijo todavía estuviera en una lista de espera de trasplante. El centro Jerry Buchheit me ha dado ayuda, me dio esperanza, estoy muy agradecida. The Harriet Buchheit Center gave me freedom and a way out of the abuse and uh, they were there to tell me it's gonna be all right, it's gonna work out. When a client comes for the first time, they're anxious, their heads are down, and they're depressed. And when they leave the center, there's an entirely different energy about them. They realize there's somebody out there that's actually there to listen, somebody there that's there to help them, and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel.